New York City's transit system has been hit hard this week with heat related signal malfunctions causing some major delays across several subway lines leaving commuters stranded during rush hour. But how exactly does extreme heat affect our aging transit infrastructure? Joining us now to discuss is Masood uh, Gadahari, a civil engineer at NYU Tandem. Masood, good to have you with us. Thank you for being with us. And just to kind of uh, just let you know, we're waiting to hear from Jana Lieber. And if he does come to the microphone, we are going to have to break away to get to him shortly, just so our audience knows that. But I want to ask you, what is it that extreme heat does to infrastructure things like signals, tracks, and power systems? Every time it gets really, really hot, it seems everything just kind of fails system wide. Well, for the uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chris, for the um, signals and and tracks, it's pretty much expansion due to heat that you know a lot of these signals are electromechanical systems and so expansions may, may throw things out of whack and, and you may end up with, with malfunctions. With power systems, typically speaking, power delivery, when everybody uses their air cons, power delivery becomes a problem. Now in the particular case of last week, a Con Edison delivery was not uh, uh, flagged as an issue by MTA themselves. Uh, but you know it's a it's it's a, it's a it's an older system and uh, you know these things happen and uh, you know uh, I know they're doing their best to to remedy the system. Is that one of the I guess one of the big keys here when you talk about vulnerability with the system? The fact that we're really kind of hoping that people aren't using their air condition air conditioners during the the you know the high heat times, so it won't affect the subway system. It just seems as though there should almost be two separate systems to to supply the energy to each. You know, um, a power delivery is a challenge. Um, I mean, for New York City, particularly since the Indian Point power plant, uh, uh, nuclear power plant has, has been cut down, which supplied 20 percent of the city. So now power comes from elsewhere. Power is from 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 Canada even. And so, yeah, I mean, p power power is a big thing. And uh, the, however, the issue here really in this particular case was the aging infrastructure. Yeah, and I do know that that you know MTA is 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 working on it, but it's a question of investment. Let me um, and well, yeah, yeah and let me ask ahead. let me ask you what kind of upgrades or engineering solutions are out there that could help quote unquote heat proof the subway system. Well, you know, a lot of renovation and 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 renewal of the systems, the the, the signals, for example. Um, you know, can can definitely go a long way. But we're talking about a hundred-year-old uh, system. Not all, of course, signals are that old, but it is a complex. It's, it's, it's one of the most complex systems in the world. Twenty-four-seven delivery. Uh, you know, it's 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 a tall order. And I do know, for example, that you know it takes money uh, to do this, and there's limited supply of that. Um, you know, we always, every time we get these massive kind of rainfalls, we, we show these pictures of the water cascading through the subway system. Um, you know, commuters just trying to keep from getting wet up to their knees because so much water is cascading through. I've got to assume, I know with all the grates throughout the city, it's tough to not have water come into the subway system, but that can't be great long term on the transit system to have that type of water flooding through the system. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, leading to to rusting, um, you know. So it it is a um, it is a it is a major problem. Uh, but I do want to, you know, make sure that I get the the point out here with respect to investment. Uh, and I do know the always question comes: How do we compare with the rest of the world? Well, the rest of the world invests twice as much on transit, from a federal point, from a federal government side. And so, if we don't invest, um, we're not going to get the services we want. And uh, I'm assuming, you know, congestion pricing, obviously, that's something that we've been talking about. Those funds going in to help with infrastructure, signal upgrades, all of the things we're talking about right now. I mean, the money doesn't just magically appear, both federal, local. Everybody's going to kind of do their part to, to help subsidize the MTA. Correct, correct. And, and I do know there's been quite a bit of expenditure in accessibility, uh, providing accessibility, um, you know, uh, to 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 commuters and <clears throat> you know so it's a it's a uh, you know making a decision on where to spend the money uh, with respect to a variety of, of legal challenges there are and I, in this particular case the accessibility was a legal challenge that was put forth for MTA and MTA responded to it by investing and now money now has to be spent on that and then shortfall in other areas such as signals. All right, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate you taking a few moments for us this morning. You're very welcome. All right, and for more information on the transit delays, you can head over to cbsnewyork.com. Hopefully today will be a little bit more